creating conversations. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 504 is with actor Omar Epps. I'm good. How you doing? Absolutely fantastic. Is it safe to say that we've watched you grow up? I mean, I remember when you first appeared on the entertainment scene, and now when we see your name, we see your your your, your image, it's like, oh, it's an automatic win. We're, yeah, you have to watch it because he's going to give you quality all the time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, first and foremost, for that. But you know what? The reality is you kind of, yeah, I have you have seen me growing up. The world has. Um, you know, I did my first film when I was 17 years old, you know, <laughs> and that was, uh, what, 30 years ago, you know, something like that. So it's a, it, it's, um, it's a blessing. That's all I could say. It's a blessing to still be able to do what I truly love to do, what I feel is um, part of my purpose in life, you know, um, to hopefully inspire and motivate um, people through the art of storytelling. And look how the industry has changed so much. I mean, I mean, when, when you got in at 17 years old, there was no such thing as streaming or anything like that. And now, I mean, it's like, you know, with, with, this is the season season number two for, for, for Power Book 3, but, it, but it's like we can go back and we can binge watch over and over again. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's, um, you know, listen, I think that there's uh, pros and cons to everything, right? Now, the beauty of where we are now is exactly what you just said. You know, you go back and then watch it over and over again, but I, the, my, I don't want to say fear, but one of my concerns is that, like, art itself is becoming too disposable. Yep. Like, I remember, let's like, think about music, right? Like, we used to line up, you know, if a record was coming out, you know, you would, it was like you saved up your money and you asked your mom or your pop for some money or you worked a little job and <laughs> you had to get that cassette. You had to get that, that CD and, and you would live with it for like two, three years, you know. And now it's like, you know, people listen to something, you know, and then the next week they're on to the next thing. That's right. That's it, right. It's just so much out there. But, you know, in a sense, it, it kind of puts the pressure on creators to, uh, to do better work. You know, how do you keep people's attention? You know, so when you see the success of something like, I don't know, uh, a Squid Games, it's like it's rising above the noise. Um, and especially with technology now, it's like anyone can do anything at any time and just put it out to the world and see what happens. Yeah. But in that same respect, I think that part of it is, is, is a pro because, you know, sometimes the people decide, sometimes the industry the machine of the industry gets in the way of discovering new talent you know um because you don't have to go about it in a traditional sense the way it used to be so I, i'm excited about that part of it moving forward being a part of of uh, um power break or power book three i mean you you play uh, detective malcolm howard to play this role this, this doesn't happen overnight yeah. i mean how did you you had to do some studying to find out who who malcolm really is and then all of a sudden we believe it right right well he's a he's a really really fun character to play for me uh if i could take you to my artist brain into my artist brain I call him an octopus, right? <laughs> because he has tentacles everywhere. That's what makes him so fun to play because, you know, he has his place in the department, but he has his own place in the department because I, I think this is one thing that kind of goes over people's heads when it comes to Raising Canaan and Detective Howard is that, you know how, how it correlates to now is what I'm saying. Like, especially in urban communities, there's a big uproar about, you know, policing and, you know, the police should police neighborhoods that they're familiar with or that they come from. And that's Detective Howard. He comes from the neighborhood he's mm-hmm. policing. So on the flip side, he has a strong, he has a foothold in the streets because he knows these kids' parents and uncles and aunties and stuff like that. So he's able to maneuver as if he's not a cop, even though everyone knows he is, you know. And then when you take that back to the, the department, that's why he has such a long leash because he's able to get places and get to people that some of these other cops, you know, they see coming a mile away. Yeah. You know, when they see Howard, it's like somebody from the neighborhood that just, you know, we know what he does, but he's still eating chicken wings and fried rice <laughs> in the same spot that they selling drugs. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> well, see, that's what's going to be so exciting about the, about this new season on Stars is the fact that you are in the neighborhood in the way of bringing the family in. In other words, the mafia. I mean, I mean, there, there's some stuff that's going down in season number two that's going to create a lot of water cooler conversation. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, and that's a that's a testament to uh, Sasha Penn, our showrunner, um, and obviously the brilliant Courtney Kemp and our whole writing team. Um, Fifty, you know, it's just there's a lot of um, a lot of great minds at work, so everyone's trying to get to the tip of the sword, so to say. Yeah, you know, yeah. Are you going to be releasing any new music soon? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Who knows, man? I mean, it's you know something I've always loved to do, and uh, you know, it's, it's a it truly is a hobby for me in that sense, but not not in a uh, pacifying sense, but just you know when I feel it, I feel it. Um, yeah. My focus has been on on well, I'm, I mean you have the right to make music, but you know, I have a new book coming out this November called Nubia, the awakening. I'm really excited about that. People can order it now um, everywhere. Books are sold, whether it's Amazon or uh, Barnes and Nobles, you know, everywhere books are sold. You can pre-order it. It's a young adult um, sci-fi fantasy. And it's my first novel. So I'm super excited about that. Dude, I, I have a iHeartRadio channel that's all for YA authors. I mean, I cannot wait to talk to you about this book because it's all about getting your voice out there because it's it's not just words on a page to YA authors. You guys are inspiring the next generation of authors. It, well, I mean, hopefully, yeah, that's that's part of the mission. And, um, you know, I'm just super excited. Uh, it's a project that took me three and a half years to yep. complete. And... I was fortunate enough to be able to, you know, hook up with Delacorte and Penguin Random House and everyone's just super excited. It, it, it's, you know, that's like my baby. So I'm really, really <laughs> excited. Like I said, people can pre-order it now. And um, and, I, and I would love to for us to have that discussion on that other channel. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to come back anytime, man. The door is always going to be up for you. It's going to be up for you. It's going to be open. You just come on in and share your story and your journey. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. You bet. You be brilliant today, okay, sir? Yes, sir. You too. You too.